And this afternoon's session will cover women as legacy builders. Um, and then Elona will take us through that. Do you wanna make it full screen or you're gonna do the, the general gallery? There you go. All right. Yeah. Amazing. You ready? Yes. Thank, Thank you, Thank you so much. Enjoy. Pleasure. Take over. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ilona Tlachwayo. I run Biz Premier. And this month, our theme is Women as Legacy Builders. So I'm quite excited to be sharing with you um, a slightly different view on how to build your legacy and what your legacy is as a woman. Um, so now before we start, I just um, want to share some stats. I was just reading that in some parts of Africa, women take up 70% of the economy drivers through the informal, um, the informal entrepreneurship sector. However, even though they take 70%, they are not actively driving, building their own legacies. They still need to depend on the men in their lives whether this is by coercion, because of culture, or just habit. So this, this really saddened me because I'm thinking you're driving the economy for everybody else, but you're not driving your own legacy. So um, this morning we're gonna unpack how a woman can build her legacy or start to build her legacy, whether you're a career woman, a business woman, or somebody that's still young and looking to see what am I going to do when I get to those stages. So a little bit for myself, um, as a young child, I think from the age of about five or six, I started to have questions on what is my purpose? What am I here on earth for? Some people will know this and others will not. Um, I'm one of a twin, I'm born a twin. So at that age of five or six, my mom sat me down and said, um, I've got to tell you that when you were younger, you had a twin sister and she passed away. So in my little five-year-old mind, I was thinking, how did, how did I stay on earth? What was the reason for me to, to remain on earth? And that's called your, your mortality motivation. Um, and that question, it's come in my life at different stages. Sometimes to say, have I made that time I have matter? What am I doing? What's important? Am I using my time wisely? And so that's been the driving thing for me in deciding, do I get involved in this? Do I stay in this job? Do I start this business? Do I grow this? Do I get associated with ABC? And I hope that, um, especially now in the time of COVID-19, that people are starting to think intentionally of, what am I spending my time on? Is it building me? Is it adding to what I want to eventually become? Or am I just wasting time with this? And we, we all know that um, we don't have a lot of time to waste. So that's me. I mean, later on in life, I was in an accident where again, it was a near death experience. And that question became more pertinent. I was already working and starting to think, have I made the time matter? What have I done for myself? How will I be remembered? What is my impact? And so I hope at the end of this presentation, we'll all start to think about what's my legacy? What's been my impact? Or what do I want my legacy to be and what's going to be my impact? Um, so in defining legacy, um, I often hear a lot of, terms that have to do with death, wills, um, how will I be remembered, what do I leave behind, wealth management, those type of words. And I was speaking to a circle of ladies um, just this weekend about the same topic and all of the same words that came up when we speak about legacy. Legacy seems to be something that happens after we're gone. We never really know what your legacy is because you're gone. And I asked this question, where will you have gone to when your legacy begins? And 90% said I'll be dead. So I just want to um, challenge that today and say, how about thinking of our legacy now and not just when we are dead? 
Um, so is legacy something that you leave behind? So we work all our lives for something that we're doing for other people. You get up every morning actively build, building this legacy for something that's gonna happen when you're gone, in your absence. Especially for those who say, the legacy is the wealth I leave behind. Something to think about. Um, how would you improve your legacy? Or if your legacy has to do with when you're gone, then you're almost a pass passive participant in what your legacy is because you have no opportunity to come and say, um, this is how I'd like to be remembered, this is my impact, and this is, you know, this is what I'm leaving behind. So I want us to think of legacy as something that starts now and not something that's going to happen one day when we, we leave the earth. Um, so in terms of dictionary definition, um, it says a situation that exists now because of, I'm just gonna shift my screen. Sorry. Okay. Full screen again, sorry guys. Um, so the definition says it's a situation that exists now because of past events, actions that took and, and stuff that took place in the past. So that's the legacy that is existing now. We can speak about the, the nation. If we speak about why are we celebrating Women's Day this year, it's because of the legacy of 1956. So that's one of the things that we'll remember that year for in terms of Women's Day. Another definition says it's something that somebody has successfully done and it has positive effects after they retire or die money or property that you receive from someone after they die. Something that is a part of your history or that remains from an earlier time. So we have this um, same theme around what you leave behind after you die. Now I'm not saying that's not important, but I want us to add a, an additional dimension to discussing this um, legacy. I'd like us to unlearn the popular meaning of legacy and start to think about what is your legacy now? If I were to say your legacy starts now, what is that? What would that be? I'd like our viewers to reflect on, since I've said legacy is not a passive thing that happens to you, what then does building your legacy mean? If it's not necessarily wealth, what else would be involved in your legacy? When would it start for you? So for me, I say legacy building is happening actively now for me. Think about who does your legacy impact? Is this, if it's wealth that you leave behind, then it's specifically to your loved ones or the charity that you leave your wealth to when you're gone and those specific people. But if we look a little bit broader to the woman today, in your career, who does your legacy impact? As you build your business, who does that legacy impact? And as a family woman, you may be a mother, a wife, a sibling, um, a relative. Is there a legacy there? And as we, we consider that there could be a legacy outside of that which I leave behind when I'm dead, what is the legacy that you leave behind when you shift from one organization to another, when you shift jobs? Is there a legacy that you leave behind in the roles? Is there something that, um, with, that is a stamp that is left with your name when you move 
from one organization to the next? Is there something that you leave behind with your clients as a business owner? And what does that look like? So does your legacy passively happen to you? Or is it something that you can intentionally craft and say, I would like that every place where I've worked, nobody says that um, I've been sloppy or I'm unreliable and so on. There are certain things that can be in your control as you start to build your own legacy decisively and intentionally. And another question to ask is, how will you know when you're building your legacy? How do you actually know that, okay, um, by doing this consistently, by delivering top service consistently, this is not only just an action I do every day, but it's part of my business legacy. As an employee, this is not just to tick a box. It is my legacy as a career woman building as I speak. And so when you decide to be inconsistent and nobody can decide, is she reliable? Is she skilled? Is she actually able to deliver what she says she can? That's also part of your legacy. So I'd like to share my definition of the legacy. Elona's definition says, it's something that you craft create and shape intentionally. You do so by being present in the process of building. So it's not, for me, it's not passive. You're building, growing and reshaping your life holistically. So including your spiritual life, your career, your business, your family life, you define your own path to success as you excel. You make a difference, expand your wealth, position yourself for the next level. And in that process, there's certain aspects of you that you leave behind. You leave aspects of your business, aspects of yourself, wherever you go. You leave aspects of your business with your clients, with your suppliers and whoever is in your value chain. You leave aspects of yourself in every position that you occupy as an employee. I've met women that have said, um, every job I've had, I got it because of my very first manager. And ever since we worked together, whenever she grows in another organization, she ensures that I grow too. That is not an accidental thing. It's got to do with the impact and the legacy that you've left with that individual that puts themselves out there to say, I want to work with this person and not any other. In terms of business and supplies, I'm sure we all have loads of stories to tell about why we would buy from person A and not from person B. And that's got to do with their legacy. So for the business owners, whenever we sloppily deliver, whenever we don't pay attention to what the clients want, whenever we don't take the feedback positively and we are aggressive, that is the legacy of your business right there. So it's important to be aware of what is it, what am I doing for my business in my interaction? I love this quote by Maya Angelou that says, your legacy is every life you touch. Now, we don't touch lives when we are gone. So this for me confirms that legacy is something we are doing actively now. And it's not something we should only speak about or think about when we think, oh, I'm in a pandemic. Um, it could happen that I'm, I'm going to die. So I must make sure that I leave everything in place. Um, of the ladies that I, I had, this lady circle that I spoke to this weekend, somebody shared so beautifully that she had to travel and for a long time away from her children. And she started to think about what impact have I had on my children? Will it be enough to sustain them while I'm away? And those are pertinent questions at which we are likely to think about while we are alive and we can alter how we impact and impart certain lessons to our children. But there's a parent who considers that as I'm traveling for business, what is it that my children remain with as a placeholder for mom? 
something that she has actively crafted, something she's actively done. So it's important to think about as I am going about my daily business, what are the important aspects? For example, what is important about Biz Premier that I leave with my clients, the people that I coach? What are the things that they say long after I've coached them? I laughed, I was around one of the people I coached early in my career and she was talking about how she's not feeling up to all this business things. And you know, it was in a social setting. She's like, oops, I'm saying this in Ilona's presence. Here she goes, she's going to challenge me on that. And it was interesting for me to reflect on that, that it is almost eight years later and she remembers that when, when you speak about being lazy about your own growth, then Ilona says, let's unpack that. What does that mean? Will you be happy that you made this decision today? So for me, that was part of the aspects of, of my legacy. Sometimes your legacy is, is something you're not aware of. I walked into um, a class the one time and somebody said to me, I recognize you. And I said, from where? No, possibly from LinkedIn, you know, and we established, we're both ECT alumni. And she said, no, it's not that. You're the business coaching lady. So that comes from her consistently associating you with something. It's important that the messaging and the actions come together. So I could sit as a coach and write all this motivational stuff online. Or you could sit as an individual who is a career woman who's writing all these things about what um, you're an HR person, you're a recruiter, you're telling everybody what to do when they go for interviews, what to do. But when people experience you face to face, because we have now this dimension that some of it is online, some of it is face to face, is it consistent? What is that which they, they judge you based on? It's what you've shared online. It's the brand that you have built. And that's all legacy stuff that is not happening today, but there's an expectation that this person positions themselves as one who empowers other women. So excited to work with her, but once I start to work with her, oh no, the wheels come off. She's not actually what she says she is. So we need to actively be aware as women, and I hope the men out there as well, that what we say we are, it forms part of our, of our legacy. And then who we are in person forms part of our legacy. How we deliver our expertise, how we interact with those who are not yet at our level, all of that forms part of the whole picture and your impact. Now, is it something that can just happen without um, your input? Definitely not. Because once you are aware that this is the, the legacy, that this is the picture that I want to build, then you also start to get clear on what do I want to be associated with and what don't I want to be associated with? What is it that you want to be known for in your industry? I've heard a lot of people say, I want to grow in my career at the start of the coaching sessions. I'm like, okay, so if, somebody had a meeting and they were looking for an expert and your name came up in the next five years, what would that be for? How would they describe you? If someone sat in the boardroom as your sponsor and says, I think so-and-so is the best for this role, what are those things that they're going to be describing? And we need to reflect, are those things passive accidental actions or is it something that you've actually been doing actively so we need to start to to engage and say okay if i'm a small business does this apply to me oh, of course it does it applies to you because every single client you interact with every single supplier you interact with all the people that you decide not to pay, all the people that you decide, ah, I can be late with their orders, 
that's building the legacy and the brand of your business. And based on that, your future interactions are judged on how people have, have interacted with you now. So enough about Ilona's legacy. Let's think about what would you envision your legacy to be? What type of career woman would you like to be known to be? Do you develop others? Are you reliable? Are you innovative, not afraid of change? Would you like to have these great projects with your name on, successful projects, wherever you go, that everybody knows that in that corporate, that division was successful because of her. And the next time we see that you're hired in another organization, everybody associates success with what you start. Everybody says, oh, it's going to go well now because they've got her. Where is the core of your legacy? Are you looking to succeed in career? Have you thought about succeeding in, in your personal life as well, balancing it all out? I know this is very um, contentious when we speak about balance with women because I'm speaking to an often overwhelmed um, group of people. And more so now with the lockdown, a lot of people have had to take on um, more work at home, online schooling, and everything else. Women as nurturers sometimes don't even notice that I've overloaded myself. Think about how does overwhelm impact my legacy building? Are you at your best when you're overwhelmed? Is it the best method for you to be thinking of strategies for growth while you're also wishing you had 28 hours in your day. Now, if you reflect on where you, are, where you are now, how far are you from the legacy you desire? So if I'm going to say, um, I want to be known as a coach that coaches people from teenage years until they're in corporate, how far am I from that? I don't coach teenagers. Already that tells me there's something I need to do. I need to be getting to the teens. If where I want to be known to do things well is that market, how will I engage with them? What's the, what do I need to know about them? What's the action that I need to attach to this desire of saying, one day when I stop coaching, I want women of all ages to say, she was a great coach. She left a great impact on me. How will women of all ages say that if I'm not coaching women of all ages? If you're running um, a, a department as a manager, and we speak a lot about how women don't empower each other. We speak a lot about empowering each other, but once we get to corporate, a lot of people say, oh, I have this really hectic boss. She's, she's really mean. What kind of female leader are you aiming to be known as? Are you an empowerer in concept, but not in action? So what's the gap between that wish you wish to be um, associated with your name and the reality right now? So this is almost like a diagnostic to say, I've always said to people that I'm passionate about developing women. Now it's time to check, am I developing women where I have opportunity? Am I letting other women in? Or am I the woman who says, well, I didn't have it easy. I don't see why I should make it easy for others. We read about it all the time that most women have male sponsors because the women in their corporates are not supportive of them. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't work hard, but I'm reflecting on the woman who says, I wanna be known 
as an empowerer of others. To reflect on how much of that are you doing in your overwhelm? Has this slipped off your to-do list? Is it not that important at the moment? So the next one speaks to how are you growing your legacy, right? So for some people, the key way that they're focused at the moment is impact through their professional skills. Some people through business, some people through family. And who says you cannot do it all? Who says your impact needs to be in one area of your life? So I speak of balance. And when I say professional impact, when you're congruent, when you're the same person that people experience in the workplace, in the business field, in your family, that you're an overall warm and supportive person, if that's what you, you set out to be, then that's really awesome. But if that's not the case, it's important to step back and start to say, how am I going to streamline my time to say, I want to be um, building my legacy as a leader of other women and I'm power of other women. I want to be leading a business that delivers superior quality. How am I going to do that? How am I going to relate to my staff to ensure that even the quality of interaction that they give my clients is aligned with what I have? So as we go through this, we see that action is very important. We can write the most beautiful vision boards about what our legacy will be, how we'll be remembered and all that. But if there's no action attached to it, yes, your legacy happens to you. And your legacy happens to you in your absence. Your legacy happens to you due to all the assumptions that people make because there's no action that attaches that which lies in your heart with what we see and what we experience. So we craft our legacy, we create it, we do this actively. If I say family is important to me, then people need to actually see that family is important to me. The family needs to feel that they're important to me. You know, we've seen, we can write the most beautiful things. I want to be, um, I want to grow in my career. I want to be known industry-wide, but I don't attend any industry events. I don't engage with anybody in the industry, but somehow I want to be known industry-wide. And that's what I want to leave behind, that I interacted across board and I knew my job from A to Z. When will you actually start to making sure that you're known industry-wide? So sometimes um, it happens that you are great at your job. You are great at your business. But somehow the control or the, um, the driving seat has been given to somebody else. You know, like I said, I spoke about the women um, across Africa that control 70% of a certain sector. But the same women are not actively driving their own legacy for various reasons. Now imagine that those who are in charge of what will my wealth look like in the next 10 years? Where will I be working? What type of role am I going to be in? What will my business look like? That's somebody else's decision, and yet they are said to be the economy drivers. That's really sad. So I advocate for taking the driver's seat in building your legacy, taking control. People that I've coached in their career will know that I say, who does it serve that you grow in this organization? Most times it serves you. Yes, the organization could hire somebody else in that role that you want. So most importantly, if you have this dream that I want to grow from where I am to the next level, who benefits the most? It is you. And yet you find that people will say, but they're not promoting me. I've done everything and I'm not getting promoted. It's almost, it's, some, it's in somebody else's hands. Most of these people have not actually gone and knocked on doors and said, 
I hear there's an opportunity. May I be considered? May you please mentor me because I would like to grow. Hard work alone is no longer the formula for you to grow in your career. But a lot of women in 2020 are sitting, hiding somewhere in their cubicles saying, if I work late and I work so long, somebody's going to notice me and promote me. There's a, a, a disconnect there because you need to also be actively involved in making sure that that somebody knows you and remembers you when the time comes. And that's part of taking the driver's wheel in building your legacy. So now when we speak about taking this driver's wheel and building your legacy, what does it mean? What skills should this driver have? And I'm using driving as a metaphor because I think it will, everybody will understand this, you know. What skills should the driver have? And I want you to reflect on, would you go on this road trip here with somebody that cannot drive? Would you be a passenger there with an unskilled driver? Would you allow them to say, I'm going from Cape Town to Joburg. I don't know if this person has a license. I don't know if they can drive, but we're going anyway. Chances are no, because that's a life and death situation. But so is your development. So is your career growth, your business growth, and anything else that you want to grow in. It's not something that you, you should leave to chance. Also on this road trip, what if your driver has no plan, not enough fuel, has never driven this road, does not know exactly how they're going to get there, but they say, let's go anyway and see what happens. Most people I know be like, uh-uh, you know, but we do this with our careers. I've coached somebody that said, for a long time, I thought if I worked hard enough, my manager will open doors for me, but she didn't. And what then happened is she and her manager had different goals for her. Her manager said, if I keep her in my team, then my team will flourish because she's really good at what she does and I really don't want to lose her. So I'm not saying the manager was wrong or a bad person, but their goals were not aligned. So on the one hand, it's all about your growth. It's all about growth, but whose growth is it? Is it your growth, the company's growth, and why can't you facilitate for your growth as well as the company's growth at the same time? And that's where you're taking charge and saying, actually, I can do more and impact more if I shift to this place. And for the business owner, instead of saying, if only my clients could come back for more, I know most business owners don't do this. They go back to the clients and say, do you want more? I can also do A, B, C, D. But if you don't and you say, um, they can see it on my website, they can see what I do. Chances are somebody that's more intentional is going to get to deliver that. So it's very important to start to think about what is it that I'm saying I want this business to grow into and what am I doing in terms of action? Am I leaving it in the hands of my clients who don't know what else I can do because I haven't told them? Am I leaving it up to them to say, you know what, I'll just tell them I can do it. And if they really like me, I'll, they'll choose me. No, that's not how the market works. So it's important to start to think about if I want my children to be exposed to ABCD, this is, these are the dreams for my children, you need to put action to it. So what action is, aligned, is attached to that thing that you want to build? I want to be a present mom. You know presence is presence. It doesn't happen by delegation, doesn't happen by... So as soon as I'm saying, this is what I want to do, 
I need to ask myself, is this the experience of those that are around me? I'm saying I want to, to change the narrative. I want to be a woman leader that grows everybody. But what do I do in reality? What happens when I get to work? What happens when I'm working from home? I'm overwhelmed today. There's online schooling. There's this and that and that. And am I mindful of that? I set out to say my team must never say they felt unsupported. Am I still doing that? Right? That's very, very important. Um, the next thing is obviously reflect on the skills that you have. Are they enough for what you want to do and where you want to grow to? This legacy that you want to build, you want to build an empire and it ends there. You can't even describe what the empire is like. How are you going to grow it? You are employed, you're saying one day I want to, um, I want to own my own business. I'm an accountant, I want to have an accounting firm. And you end there. Are all accounting firms the same? What's going to be different about yours? Where is it going to be located? How many people are you going to employ? Who are you going to impact? Whose lives are you going to change? The more you, you fill that picture, the richer it becomes, the richer the image becomes. But if it's one of those things that is just, I want to run my own business. And even you don't have a full picture of what is, I want to run my own business, look and feel like then how will you know what actions to attach to it? How will you know when, some, when you meet somebody that's very key to your next level, that that's the person I need to meet, that's the person I need to speak to, if you're not clear about what you need, if you're not clear about what you're building. So it's important to reflect on your own skills, to say, this is what I have and I'm lacking in this, but it's very important for the future I want to have. The next time you meet a person with that skill, you are going to be almost like, I need to speak to you. I've been waiting to speak to you for so long because your legacy building is pertinent, it's important, it's here and it's now. You cannot take the wheel if you're not able to drive. So in the time where you are still planning ahead and say, this is what I want to do, it is important to think about what skills will I need then and start to build them now. Because we cannot say, when we turn 50, we're going to go on this road trip and none of us can drive. On a practical level, people tend to plan it all out and say, this is where we're going. This is probably where we're going to stop. This is what we're going to eat on the way. And this is how we're going to replenish ourselves. But none of that goes into our building our legacy. We just get up, go to work, come back home. And even with our businesses, we're now almost in a cycle. I am selling, um, I'm selling cakes. And so it goes, I go from every time people come to me. I don't know why they come to me. I don't know what, what makes me different from others. So I have no idea how to scale up and make sure that this cake business becomes that empire that I want. You're doing your work very well. But what are the skills that you will need for the next level? And if that next level is so important and so amazing for you to say, that's what I want to be known for as the person who started with this small business to somebody that had franchises, for example, then start to think about what do I need to learn in order to start a franchise? What do I need to do in order to grow bigger from where? What have other people done? Who can I speak to? So you need to always be clear on where you are now, where you want to go in terms of building that legacy. Some people do it through their career. Some people do it through their business. Some people's um, legacy focus at the moment is their children. And so start to think about what skills do I need to be able to make this what I'm visioning it to be in my mind. 
a disclaimer, I don't drive an Audi, but that's the picture I found. So some of the things to do, um, to think about is how alert is the driver? So you're on this road trip and remember the road in the previous slide, how alert is the driver? And that's very important. So as a driver goes, they see the landmarks. They see the threads, the, the, the detours, the potholes, all those things. Most times your passenger on the, on the front side or at the back is concerned with other things. Yes, they may watch the road, but they don't really have to because they know you will, right? I've met people who have this approach when it comes to their careers that I'm just going with the flow and I'll see where growth takes me. I'll see where that flow takes me. I've seen people with their businesses will say, people are not buying from me. I've got everything. I've got social media. I've got an online store. I don't seem to have traffic. But they're still going with the flow. They don't have anything to measure the metrics in the back end of your business to say, how do you measure performance? Oh, but I'm, I'm a SMME. I'm not an employee. We don't have performance measures. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to start to think about how alert am I about what's happening as I journey on this um, legacy building. So as I said, passengers often don't watch what's happening as attentively as the driver should. The passenger may not know that we're gonna run out of fuel, but the driver should. So that's two ways of looking at the same journey, one as a passenger and one as a driver. And I'd like you to reflect, what type of alertness do you bring to the journey? At the moment, are you like a passenger or are you the driver? The driver will be quick to see that there's a place I can refuel in the next five kilometers. But I have less than two kilometers worth of fuel. Your passenger could be happy go lucky and success happens to them or success doesn't come to them. So just because um, you're not actively doing this legacy building, it doesn't mean you won't get successful. Success will come. But because you don't know how did I get promoted in the past? How did I come up? How will you be able to replicate it? How will you replicate the success that you've had in the past if you were a passenger? You got to the destination, it was beautiful. And now you are stuck at the destination. You want to go to the next place, but you have no idea what the last trip took, how you got there, what type of things the driver had to take into mind, how the driver stayed awake, and all those things because you were a passenger and it was awesome. And you got there and you had fun. So what type of alertness are you bringing to this journey? What type of skills do you have in this journey? Is it passenger or is it driver? And think about what type of skills would be important for you going forward. So if it's the career you wanna grow, if you, you wanna get into, if you're a junior executive or you're a senior manager, you wanna go higher, we all know the skills that got us here won't get us to the next level. But if you have no idea of how you even got to management, for example, how will you build yourself up to the next level? If this driver decides, that's it, I'm done, I'm not going to the next level, this is my final destination, and you have a desire to keep going, how would that be? If you're an unskilled driver, you never bother to think about what goes into driving and suddenly you have no driver. And this happens with retrenchments. This happens with the economy shaking. This happens with the lockdown. 
I have a business, it's going well. I don't really know what, hap- what, what, my, what my success metrics are. And so when something shifts, I don't even know where to start in terms of fixing, going back onto that success journey. Because I've never taken time to think about the skills that I need. I haven't been as alert as a, as a driver. I've been a passenger and it's gone well. It's been very rewarding. But now COVID-19 has hit us and there's lockdown and suddenly you have to have all these skills and all this alertment, alertness at the last minute. And that's not ideal. So as we plan our, our, our careers, plan our business, plan our lives and our identity and your legacy as a woman, it's important to be aware what are the things that worked to get me here and how did I do it? Reflection is very, very important because it's not just the success. The success will come and pass and maybe you now want more. How will you get to the next level if you've got no idea what were the, 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 the important ingredients? You go somewhere and you pitch. You haven't thought about what makes me different and so on. And by luck, you get that tender. But perhaps that's not going to help you in the next place. So what I'm basically saying is important to understand your own skills toolkit as a business owner to understand your business as a whole, what are our strengths, what is our competitive advantage and how will I get this business to where I'm saying that's what I wanna be known for. It definitely cannot happen if you're a passenger. So, you know, we we find ourselves at this time where we started off with that beautiful road. Remember the flat um, highway that looks like you can do amazing speeds on it. But somehow you get to this windy road and you gotta be even more alert because the road is not as predictable anymore. It's important to adapt. Adaptability, I always say, is one of the important skills of this time. Because when you start off in a role, 10 years later, those skills that you used 10 years ago are probably not even relevant. There is just so much change. That is in the, in the working world, but also in the business world. Perhaps things change even faster. What happens when my supplier closes down and goes broke and this was my key supplier and now I have no ingredients for what I'm doing? What then? Do you also close your business? So starting off on a good road, you have good networks. Everybody says, okay, here's some work. Here's this, I'm gonna subcontract you and so on. It doesn't mean that you won't get to these windy roads. It doesn't mean that there'll be no portals, there'll be no detours. So it's important to think about that is my overall goal. I want to build this legacy. But what am I going to do should things shift from what it is now? What am I going to do when the economy changes? What am I going to do when my clients' needs changes? If I'm comfortable in my corporate role, I've got an amazing relationship with my manager, What am I going to do if she leaves and I get a new manager that doesn't like me? For some people, that's a deal breaker. They don't, they just go to work to be liked. And if they're not, then it's, it's a mess. I don't like my job anymore. So it's important to teach yourself to adapt. Expect that things will, will change because that's one of the surest things in the world right now. It's important to refuel and recharge yourself as the driver because we've left the passenger behavior behind. Refuel and recharge yourself. How, is, how do we do the refueling and recharging ourselves? Learn new things. So like I said, the skills you had when you started your business, they're great, but are they going to keep setting you apart from your competitors forever? Stop and relearn. 
and recharge yourself. Understand that I'm not in the same environment that I was in 10 years ago when I started this business. Things are changing, new players. It's important to always understand even your peripheral view. I love the driving example because we know that we've got so many mirrors, so many things to be aware of, and it can't just be about that. I can drive, I've got a destination, I've got fuel. Your fuel will run out. You will get tired. Your team will change. The organization that you work for, their focus will change. Perhaps their focus was your one best skill. What then when the focus shifts? So do you wait for things to change? Do you wait for your tank to be empty before you stop at a garage? No. Continuous improvement of yourself as the key instrument in this legacy building is very important. So your growth cannot happen in a vacuum. You cannot um, say, I want to scale up my business and I want to be bigger than my neighbor, but I don't read. I don't even know what's happening in the environment. What I'm clear on is where I want to go. I've never driven on a windy road. I've never heard of it, but I'm going. What happens there? So it's important to stop and try and understand your environment the environment in which your business operates, the environment in which your suppliers operate because that impacts you, and the environment in which your clients are in. It's no use to sit and say, oh, my clients are getting retrenched, they're losing jobs, but I'm just gonna keep producing at the same scale as I was because I'm, this is my model. Be able to adapt in reaction to your environment, and that has to do with you having that alertness of a driver. Reflect. Reflect on what has worked. Why did it work? So you go, you, you apply for this role, they take you in, you keep having these meetings, things are going well. It's important to stop and say, what actually is going well? Is it my skill? Is it my, is it my technical skills? Is it my people skills? What's the reason behind the growth? Then you are now in control. You know that this is the thing I'm leading with because this is what's working. But if you have no idea where is my success coming from, then you won't be able to, to improve it. As your environment changes, you won't be able to adapt the key thing that grows your business. Now, it's very important to prepare for things that are out of your control, right? Like I said, when you have built your career on that, um, you've got this lovely boss that makes you, every day when you wake up, you're so excited to go there. What happens when they're not there anymore? Because your focus has been a happy work environment. When it stops being happy, what is your plan for them? It's important to be happy at work, no problems there, but what is your personal strategy should the social aspect in your work environment shift? Does it mean that you stop building that legacy that you set out to build? Does it mean you even give up on building yourself as that woman that's sought after for ABCD? How, what are your plans for when there's obstacles in your way? Do you shift and go back to drawing board and say, it looks like I need to change what legacy I want to build because it's now too difficult. It's very important to have growth partners along the way. I've had coaches along the way. I coach other people. I have coaches. And you outgrow your coach sometimes. Perhaps you needed a coach because you were at that level. You got that. You did that. I've been saying the strategy that got you here will not get you to the next level. So plan and prepare for that. My plan will not always work as, as, as I set it out. The road will not be st as straight and flat as the, when it starts. Am I able to drive up the freeway? How do I do with the bends? Am I going to be alert? Am I going to be awake? All that has to do with 
how are you preparing yourself for the next day? Are you preparing yourself for when you have a puncture? For those months where your business doesn't make anything? Do you even know what to correct at that point? You know, like what is the thing that you're going to say, this is what went wrong and this is where my focus is. But if you're not alert and not looking to say, I messed up. The only relationship that was going well at work was with my manager. But I only recognize this because my manager is gone. And then now I'm paralyzed because things are not going well. So it's very important to keep this image in mind to say, if I'm saying I'm the driver, reflect on, am I really being the driver? Are you using all the mirrors? Are you aware of what's in the blind spot? You don't have to make all the mistakes that are there in your industry or in your, in your field. Watch out for what's happening to others. A good driver will see an accident about to happen to another driver further and, ad and adjust their own speed. It didn't need to happen for them in order for it to impact them. So when we speak about prepare for things that are out of your control, what could be the things that are out of your control that can happen in your quest to build your wealth? A recession, perhaps. What could be out of your control when it comes to career building? Perhaps you've identified that you're a specialist in this one item and suddenly the organization you work on decides that that's not really the direction they want to go. Um, what could be the things that are out of control when you are building your business? Perhaps your client find another um, supplier that they prefer or the lockdown happens and you, you order your things from out of the country, suddenly you don't have that anymore. An interesting one when it comes to family and parenting, in 2020 alone, I'll say I've coached about 15 small business owners who are female, who share a very sad and similar story. Last year was great, everything was going well, and then I got divorced. I'll tell you, those businesses are not really existing. They're not profitable. Divorce happened, and the woman could not lift herself up. The business crashed. And I'm not talking about a business that started in 2019. I'm talking about solid businesses that have been impacted by the unexpected that's happened in the female owner's life. And I find that really, really sad. I mean, divorce on its own is sad. But because of how much self-belief these women have or how much coping mechanisms they have, their businesses or their careers have gone down the drain. These specific women are running businesses and everything's just crashed. Somebody said to me, I'm struggling to believe I can still do it without him. So we're not here to man bash, but we are saying, be happy in your marriage, be happy as a parent, be happy building your career and your business but you must know that there's always going to be the things that are out of your control that come. And that's where you start to ask yourself, how important is it for me to build my career, even if it's not in this company, since I've been retrenched? Am I building a career or is it about this job only? In terms of business building, this amazing young person just started their company. They are better than me in social media. They are better than me in everything. I don't think there's room for me. Hmm. I've heard that. I mean, somebody said, you know, there's just so much against me at the moment. Um, 
I'm not the right, right age, I'm not the right race, I'm not, you know, all these limiting things that we put in front of ourselves that come and then say, is it really, is that the real reason that your business has crashed? For parents, they were cute when they were young, suddenly they're teenagers and they're talking back. That's out of your control somehow. But how does it relate to you building your legacy? Do you stop? Do you stop that dream of saying, I want my kids to value this. I want my kids to be responsible citizens. And how do you do it? How do you shift your approach now that you've reached a different season? You may have a preference for um, a certain uh, manager, female manager. Now you have a male one. You say, well, now I don't know how to talk to this person. How do you adapt yourself? I mean, I, my heart was really sore to say, what is happening? Yes, there's a, there's a lot of divorce that I'm aware of. But for me to get to engage with people who say that since the divorce and all the legal battles, it's, it's built into my business and I'm unable to operate. I've had to let go of my staff. I've had to disappoint clients. You know, I am now on the wrong side of the law when it comes to paying my debt. All because something that's out of your control came into your life and we're unable to adapt. So it's important to say we will plan our legacies, we'll plan what we want to grow, but also prepare for things that are out of your control and know that I still would like to build a business, perhaps under different circumstances, but things that are out of your control should really not be the things that make you lose your passion for your dream. So as we're speaking about adapting and preparing for the difficult roads, I saw this quote that said, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. Um, and it sounds cliche, to say this, but I've met quite a lot of people who will say, I almost gave up because things just seemed not to be working, right? But I didn't, and that's why I'm here, and that's why it's amazing, and that's why, you know, we know these, these type of stories. So it's important to teach yourself that really, really, it's very rare that in career building, in business building, in raising our children and anything else that's important to us that everything will come easy perhaps segments of it will come easy but you also need to say it's not this way forever it may get difficult and what am i going to do how am i skilling myself for that what do i need to know for when difficult roads come And this is what I need to learn, who can teach me. Perhaps I'm in a, an easy road at the moment, but I'm aware of somebody in a difficult road and what can I learn from that situation as I watch or as I'm involved, depending on your level of involvement. What do I need to know for the next level? What do I need to know in order for me to build this legacy effectively and impactfully? What do I need to do? So I keep emphasizing that action is very important in this journey. I'm just gonna have water. So the actions that we put into our plans and our goals and our visions are the game changers. So what do I need to start doing more of? What do I need to start doing less of? If that's where I wanna go to. Um, who do I need to become? So I'm currently raising teenagers. So this is a lovely example because I keep, I always reflect on how easy certain stages of parenting seemed. But I also then remind myself that no, I had a, a tantrum three year old at some point. So perhaps I can work with the teenager, for example. So who do you need to become in order to skillfully get to where you want to go. 
So if you need to be a shrewd and a good negotiator, how do you do that? What do you need to know about negotiation now that you are working with difficult people? How, what do I need to do in order for my voice to be heard, in order for me to grow there? What do I need to know? Who do I need to know? What do I need to do? Who can help me? And all of that. So sometimes some of our self-sabotaging actions is thinking everything that I need to do to build my legacy rests on me alone. It's important to also think about who's my network, who's been placed in my network that I can do this with. Be open to working with different people. Perhaps the network that you have that got you here is not necessarily the network that you need for the next step. Expand that network. What needs to shift in me in order for me to get to that which I want to build? So we tend, it's very easy to complain about our context. You know, there's no room for women. Nobody's making space for us, A, B, C, D. But what needs to shift in me? It's important to look in ourselves as well to say, what do I need to do? And if it's I who needs to build that table instead of wait to be on the table, what do I need to do? Or am I sitting waiting to receive when I'm not willing to give in my interactions with people? What are the things that I need to change as an individual? What are the things that I need to grow into as an individual for that next level? And in this instance, it's very, very important to be honest with yourself, to say, in this business relationship, my business rests on that. I have this person that subcontracts work to me. They give me such great work. But what have I given? Have I given in this interaction? What happens when this person finds another one who believes in give and take and I've lost my giver of business? So it's very, very important to reflect, introspect, and see all in as much as I have this great plan for my growth, for my business, is it just about me? What impact am I having on those that I interact with? What am, am I an enabler for others? Am I doing what was done to assist me? Am I doing it for others as well? So it's also important to think that this driver that's going to drive from Cape Town to Joburg needs some care because you are going to get tired along the way. It's going to get hot. You're going to get sleepy, all of those things. How do you take care of the driver to make sure that you do get to the desired destination and it goes well? One of the things that it at Bizpreneur will help you with is how to practically take the driving seat in your career, in your specific situation, and how to unlock your potential and grow your career, taking control of your legacy much more than you have. And then with the business owner, sometimes it doesn't have to be a lonely affair and you don't have to make all the mistakes in order to learn and grow. So our coaches also assist you in being able to um, take, take risks, calculated risks, learn from our experience, and also have somebody else to bounce off ideas with and get that accountability partner. Like we said earlier on, sometimes you get lazy with your own goals because it just looks so hard. I haven't driven on the windy road. Let me just leave it. This is not for me. It's advanced. So we challenge you out of those thoughts that will limit how much you grow. Um, I think now is time for, um, oh, we have a mastermind for women that's going to start in September. This is a group of women that is going to get together and we do active legacy building. A lot of women have said, I've let my 2020 dreams 
go by the wayside because of lockdown. My dreams are on lockdown. But I want to say, let's start in September. There's a discount for those who are um, with BWA and are watching this um, mastermind. And let's shift things. Let's take control of what our legacies are going to be. Drive the economy, but also drive your own growth. Um, I'm going to pause now for a q and A. I'm not sure if Wisa is going to um, Wisa is going to moderate that. From our attendees, do we have any questions or comments? We can just put them in the chat. Wow, Ilona. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I know that I've got questions. So as we, as we kind of think through this as well, I, I, I wanted you to, to respond. So thanks again for, for an amazing kind of session. And again, please, everybody, take advantage of the opportunity to engage and connect with Alona on coaching. And I know a lot of people, um, you know, again, I'm not sure how much time, I don't recall that I heard you say much about yourself, but um, if you don't oh, know, okay. <laughs> uh, Alona is a, is, a, is a PhD candidate um, at the moment, and, and she's kind of putting together a thesis. So again, it's a bright spark for, for, for our nation and our country. I know that for me, I have, I have two questions that I wanted to ask you, but the first one, if I can start, mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time talking about legacy, I think in the context and construct of um, our own businesses. Mm. I wanted to widen this conversation, kind of speak altruistically, Lona, around legacy that, you know, all women should have uh, as a target for their families. Um, mm -hmm. Again, part of that is a business. But part of that yeah. is their children. Part of that is intergenerational wealth. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, what advice would you give women? I mean, a lot of families in South Africa today are led by women. They, they're more matriarchal yeah. structure. What advice would you give women how they can build the kind of legacies that begin to shape and reshape our future? Um, and again, to bring context to that, I mean, this COVID period, is affording all of us an opportunity in which to reset, readjust, yeah. and almost reimagine um, the future. So I know you've, you've spent a lot of time talking about legacy related to an individual business. How do we take that same kind of context and elevate it to reshape our, our lives as, as, as communities? And as as family, family and communities. And especially, okay. yeah, especially as Black families. Okay, so um, one of the things that I tend to emphasize is that when we speak about women empowerment, let us not forget the boys and the men. And simply because um, I remember when I was at WITS the other time in January and it was registration time, it was interesting to see that there's quite a lot of young girls and very few of them, like the proportions were quite alarming. And somebody then made a comment and said, where are the people who these young ladies are going to marry or have children with? They are not at varsity. They are not registering with them. I mean, the difference was, was huge. And we look at how many programs we do for women, which are very important, but we should not forget to close the loop because as we empower and elevate our young ladies and we leave the young men around, society will then have another problem. So I think balance is very important in that we look at things holistically. So for the woman that wants to grow um, and impact herself, she needs to remember my impact is not just at work. My impact is at home. And it stretches over to all, like almost to say, who are the stakeholders in my life besides my boss that gives me my salary or if you're a business owner, my clients and so on, to say the community in which I live in, have I left a positive mark? If I say I'm so uh, passionate about developing people, 
but the community close to me has so many unemployed people and I've never donated an hour of my time to just tell them how to build a good CV. An unpaid hour, that will go a long way. So it's important to always think about that. We, we, not, we may not all be millionaires, but we have something to contribute to our communities. With your skill, with your time, it's not always about making big donations, but make sure that the community benefits from having someone like you because you live in that context and improving the community in which we live in is better for you as well. That's amazing. And again, my second question is, is, related, is, is similar but related to the context around how uh, men in our society can begin to start supporting the, that intergenerational wealth conversation. How should we be thinking about this? Um, um, how could we again be, I mean, as you know, in, 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 in many cultures across the continent, we have a common trait of, uh, you know, the balance between patriarch and matriarchy. But at the same time, um, what we do also realize that wealth needs to move from one generation to another. What is the role of men in society as we build legacies that stretch beyond our immediate kind of um, situation? Suiza, you know, one of the dangers that we have now is that we are living in a time where people are interested in instant gratification. You know, with um, social media and all the games and all the things, everything comes now and happens now. I think one of the first things is to learn self-discipline, to say, as we speak about, this is the legacy that I want to build. It obviously comes with sacrifice to say, I'm not going to blow all the money I make because then I won't have money for the future that I'm trying to build. Yeah. But, you know, oftentimes it's like, why can't I drive the Maserati now if I can? If the bank says I'm allowed to take this big loan, why don't I do that? It's not, those decisions are not being made in the context of what can this money do for me in generations to come? How can I invest in such a way that I am still comfortable in later years to come. It's always scary when we hear that many young people are not doing anything for pension, for example, because life is good now, you know? Mm. So it's important for people to start to think about in the context of your legacy, your legacy is ongoing and it's long-term, mm. but action needs to attach that too. So it's not just, I wanna build an empire is what I'm doing every day aligned to actually building an empire that's sustainable and goes into the next generation? Mm. How are we raising our children? What type of spending habits do they see? Somebody once shared that um, if your child asks for a new bike and you buy it today, sometimes you need to delay and say, I don't actually, it's not a priority now. Let's wait for it. Teach your ch children to save. Let your children in on that, oh, I like that house. And your children will tell a story that it took my dad five years to go there. Because sometimes they think that because you liked that house and got it this year, perhaps you liked it five years ago, but you don't communicate these, these dreams with your children. I love that. Your yeah. mind yeah. is that you liked it this month, you got it this month. And so that's how life works. Mm. How resilient are they going to be to actually stick to a goal for five years and say, this is what I'm working for and I'm gonna to stick to it because I know it works. I've seen it in my dad. Hmm. And sometimes it's the mom. Sometimes we have single uh, parent homes. It's important for your children to be able to see that things don't happen at the click of a finger. Even though hmm. our devices and everything make it look like that, we need to bring back the value of hard work, of self-discipline and sacrifice. Mm. In I the love practical that. day to day things we do. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. In fact, it's a it's a lesson that I think as Africans we can take from multiple other um um kind of communities. If I think back to you know Muslim community, if I think back to the Indian community, if I think back to the Chinese community, 
to the Jewish community, um, a lot of that kind of processing and thinking in legacy building, in sharing experience and knowledge, in transparency of process uh, with yeah. your kids. In fact, that's a nice segue. We've got a, a question from Anonymous here. Uh, Elono, thank you so much for, for such an insightful and thought-provoking presentation. What legacy are you currently building for your children? Okay. I, I, I must say as well to, to, to everybody watching, I, I, know, I know Elona's uh, husband, we were at university <laughs> together, so I, I know that he's a very hard working, he's always been that way kind of person, so I'm also curious to understand uh, this question, so go ahead. Okay, um, so I'm going to take it back just a tiny bit. I'm a child of a farmer, and I always share that there were times I didn't know why my dad told me certain things. Um, he would tell me, I'm going to sell three cows because I want to go and buy a quantum. It's going to be a taxi and I'm going to use that money for the, so you're in primary school and you're being told all these things and you see it happen and you're like, oh, okay. And then he says, okay, with the money for this, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do that. A lot of that is involved in how I run my business today. But I was in primary school when I started those conversations, which many people would think, oh, no, she's too young. Why are you telling her about your business strategies? You know what I mean? And there were boys in the family. But I had these conversations with dad. Being a farmer as well, speaking to me about seasons, there was times when there was a drought. He put in everything planted and nothing was harvested. We had those conversations too. So it's important for children to know that you can do everything right and the result is not always perfect, right? For my children, one of the things that is important for me personally is that they know their purpose and find their passion. They may not be um, very skilled at what they're passionate is, but they should know what am I passionate about and what do I want to do? And where I come in is if you want to learn how to do art better, I will take you to the art lessons. I will facilitate for your growth, but you need to find it yourself. So I'll make an example. I had a, a, one of my child's friend come to visit a couple of years ago. And she said to me, I'm bored. And I didn't know what to do with that question because my kids don't say that. I don't design for them. This is how your day must go. They need to learn to initiate. They need to discover. And if they are bored, they need to think of something to do. So I'm not a rescuer of a parent. The legacy that I think, it, besides wealth and money, one of the important things is they are thinking in individuals and they are adventurous and they are curious. So my daughter is 14 and she's already told us, I want to study architecture. I found that in the Netherlands, they've got good architects. I didn't teach her that. Do you know what I mean? So it's important to, I think if, if you have thinking children, encourage them to think and seek knowledge on their own. Mm. Yeah. And I've got one more, and again, just looking at time, but it's also coming through. I think this is more kind of around your coaching um, um, uh, hat. What advice would you give uh, to savings and meeting saving objectives? For example, school fees, buying a house, saving, uh, saving for a business. How does one save for different goals from a, monthly, from a monthly contribution? Any thoughts on that? Okay, so my high level advice, since I'm not a financial advisor, um, align that to importance and priorities. I've found people who speak about, they've got good savings, but they're also in a lot of debt. For me, it always makes, it makes sense to reduce your debt and start to save according to priority. So the things listed, I think, was school fees and so on. If the thing that you find is important to you and your family is a good education for your kids, then the time spent and the money spent and the effort spent on education needs to reflect that. So one of the starting points is to say, if I say that, I'm saving to, I want, what's important for me is a legacy and a good home and good area and so on for my family, then your spending habits needs to reflect that it needs to align. 
and you also need to be prepared that you will sacrifice some pleasure now for that which you are saving for. So you cannot build that future you want while you're having every gratification that's happening along the way. The two don't always go together. So cool. So again, thank you, Elona, for, for coming through. Again, you can check out on Facebook. Um, she also does some writing as Bizpreneur. I think from time to time gets published in the Sunday <laughs> Times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I so, <hope>. look, <laughs> so look out for her posts on Facebook. She's hosting uh, an amazing series again during Women's Month, and we and we love all these programs um, that support Women's Month. Um, so again, you're more than welcome to go to um, her pages on Facebook and, and subscribe uh, to YouTube. But a lot of this information already is on her website, uh, which is brispreneur.co.za, and you can find out more about the work that uh, she's also doing.